Hello and welcome to Codersaurus. Today we're going to continue our uh, our series on Bootstrap and AngularJS. Actually, we haven't gotten into AngularJS yet, but um, today what I thought we'd do is we'd take an example. Here's an example Hello World page created with Bootstrap and we'd recreate it in Apex. So last time we left off with importing our Bootstrap application, Bootstrap themed application, and uh, getting all the styling to look correctly. And that's where we left off. So we'll pick it up from there. The first thing I want to do is I want to look at what what our example is. Um, this example, I went out to the getbootstrap.com website. And if you go there and click on getting started, this is where we can download actually a, a copy of Bootstrap if we needed to. We actually already have it bundled into the application that we imported last time. If you didn't uh, watch that, there's actually a getting started with Bootstrap, AngularJS, and Apex revisited. I did, uh, I started one, I did a part one, but then I've revisited, and this is part one, sort of part 1.2 or whatever. Um, and the reason for revisiting is because I actually found a, a better um, example of Bootstrap. Um, well, not, maybe not better. There's a few extras in it. And, uh, and I thought I'd just show a second way to do it. And so that's what I'm going to be working off of. So if you haven't, if you haven't gotten there, you'll probably want to go through that first and then come back and, and go through this episode. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do is we want to go into our application builder, log into Apex get into your application builder and go into your bootstrap three. You may have renamed the application. Um, we're going to create a new page and the type of page will be blank. Click next and we'll give it a name. We'll call it hello world. We'll call it hello world two because I actually uh, have already gone through this a little bit in an example, a practice example, hello world two. Don't use any tabs, click next, and then just finish. So real basic creation. Now let's go ahead and just run that so we can see what we're starting with. Um, I've actually got, and this application has um, authentication turned on. And the type is Oracle Application Express authentication. So in other words, uh, you have to have a user set up in application express and the way that you do that is you need to go home go to apps administration manage users i think we did this last time but i i went ahead and i created a demo user and you'll want to just fill in some dummy information there make sure that they are not an administrator and not a developer that way uh, you're testing with with uh, just a regular user you have to put in a password i always uh, there's some options there whether you want the user to have to reset their password on login. So if I go back to my application and run my page, that's uh, Hello World 2, just run it. I'll have to log in, demo. And so what I see actually is something up at the top. Now yours may look a little bit different. I've actually modified, um, I've modified mine a bit. So yeah, yours, yours may look a little different. Um, in any case, you must, you probably have something at the top and then, and then that's about it. Well, let's go ahead and look at the, this example, this hello world example. If we scroll down to about the, uh, the middle of the page on this get bootstrap getting started, um, we see a number of examples. This is the one I'm using this jumbotron. So we'll click on that and uh, my page actually doesn't look like that yet, but it should come close. Um, and we'll talk about maybe some, some differences there. There shouldn't be too many differences because it's in the, in the end, it's HTML and CSS. Um, I will show just one real simple way to get this done. So if we go to view page source and if we copy everything inside of the container, Actually, uh, 
everything inside the body. Let's do that. Just copy all of this. All of it. So we'll copy that. And we'll go back to our our body and create a region. And it'll be just a div class. And we'll put in some text here. So we're working off of this region and there's a text property. We paste our entire body in there. And then there's one more thing we have to do, and that is we have to, on this attributes, we have to say that the output is HTML, not don't escape the HTML. So let's run that. And so we get, we get right off the bat, we get a, uh, something that looks like this. Now yours may not look exactly like this. There's one more thing you may have to do to get that done, and that is we go back here, inspect, and we look at sources, we notice that they do have a, a small amount of styling specific to this example. It's not part of Bootstrap, it's specific to this example, and we need to apply that styling. So we'll copy that, and there's a couple of places we can put that. We can put it in the page itself. So if I go back to my page, there is some CSS, and I can actually put it in a file and reference it from my server, uh, or I can just inline it, and I can save it, and run it. It doesn't, it doesn't look to be doing too much. There's, it's probably this right here, this space. Um, the other place that we can put it is, take it out of there. Um, and then pro this is probably the more proper place, is we can actually go to page, shared components. And this page is based off of a template. So if I can go to my templates and the page type of templates, I can see that this template is called TB for uh, Twitter Bootstrap Non-Fluid No Tabs. So if I click Edit Component on that, I can actually go to the Cascading Style Sheets. And actually, I've already got it there. Just paste it in and click Apply. So now if we run our page, I should be able to see that somewhere in in my styling. Let's go ahead and open up our head. See the links to all the styles, but now we see the inline styles. And then the third option is actually to put, to add, to upload a file and then reference the file. That, that's maybe the, the way you would do if you were actually hosting this and you wanted all of your CSS JavaScript checked in. Um, so we've got a shared components, static application files, um, upload a file, probably put it in the same location as some of your other CSS. So let's look for CSS. So could be in your CSS, could be in, I wouldn't put it under the bootstrap area. So you maybe have s4atb.css or slash CSS, and then put it in there. And then the way that you would reference it is you could reference it just using that. So you would copy that and add that to any page template. So we'd go back to our page template. And actually the page templates, let me just show this. Well, I'll be doing a whole section on shared components templates, because it's a real, it's a real there's a lot to it. And uh, so if we go to templates, let me just do this, um, type equal to page. And this is the Twitter bootstrap non-fluid no tabs. We can edit that. And this is, this is where I was before. I only got to it through a, via a shortcut from the page definition. Since that page was referencing this page template, I can go into it from there, or I can go straight to shared components, templates, find my template, click on the cascading style sheet. And I don't know if I copied that, but yeah, then I would just paste it there. And then the other option is actually just to pay, uh, to reference it using a, a lookup. We won't talk about that right now. 
All right, I'm going to cancel that. Um, well, let me make sure the CSS stayed there. Okay, so yeah, my inline CSS is still there. So my, my styling. All right, let's go back to our Hello World 2 app. And uh, so what did I do? All I did was create a div, and I included a bunch of, um, well, a number of options. Um, that's probably not the best choice, because now, now all I'm dealing with is, or now all I'm using Apex for is, is a page. Uh, rendering or page storing storage system and that's not really the benefit of not really getting the benefit of of uh, of apex what I would probably more like to do is have a number of regions and subregions set up this is an option if you I mean if that's what you would like to do then that, that's fine you'll notice that the, even the even the text editor is a little bit limited so um, Maybe, maybe not the best option, uh, or doesn't give you the best benefit, I would say, um, that Apex can offer. Uh, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to delete this, and I will show it a different way. What we're going to do um, is we'll go take off this view source. We'll do that. And then let's inspect here. And so what I'm going to try and do is, little by little, build this, build up this this example. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to skip this this top toolbar. In fact, I may leave that for a, another video. That's that's a this nav bars are a little bit uh, well, they're they're a little more work than than just the regular um, page layout kind of normal. Uh, grid type work. So what I'll do is I'll actually start here. I'll start with this Jumbotron and we'll go down. So the first thing we want to do is we want a div with class Jumbotron. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll, we'll add a, a region and it's going to be, I'm going to set a few things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name. I'll call this Jumbotron. Um, I don't have any text in it yet. I do want to set the template to be div, and then I want to give it a class, Jumbotron. Now, I pretty much always go to attributes and set as HTML, in case I do put some HTML in there. And already I see that we've got some styling getting picked up. Uh, this is Jumbotron. Okay, so now the next thing I need to do is I need to see what's inside there. Inside of the Jumbotron, there's a container. And inside that container, there's some some text. <clears throat> so let's do that. Let's create a sub region inside the content inside the jumbotron. And now that's going to be called container. Doesn't really matter what the title is um, because we're picking div region with ID, and it doesn't include a title in the temp in the region template. Um, we'll put some text in a little bit. But the next thing I want to do is I want to set the attributes to HTML always. And I want to set the class to container. So what did I do? I gave it a title. Well, I right clicked on the Jumbotron, included a subregion, gave it that subregion a title. You can see that the parent is Jumbotron, so that it shows that relationship there. That we set the template to be the div with ID. The class is container. And then I set the attributes to HTML. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to grab whatever text is in there. And the way I can do that is, let's do this again. View the page source. And we'll just grab everything that's in there. Okay, so here's Jumbotron, here's my container. And we're grabbing everything that's inside the container. So we've got a container, and that's our text. And we can 